Do plant-based dieters catch less COVID? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and on my channel, I review and debunk nutritional information online. In this video, we're gonna be talking again about the studies that show, purportedly show, or have seen the association of different diets and the risk and severity of COVID illness. And while COVID may be gone or not an issue for most people, I think it's important to learn from this in terms of other infections. And certainly if a dietary approach would make you have less infections, that would be pretty interesting to know. Be sure to wait till the end of my video when I put it all together and give you my final thoughts. Hey, it's Mike here. And today a very recent study has dropped looking at various diets and COVID risk in terms of catching it at all, which is really interesting. And they found that people on plant-based diets had a much lower chance of getting it. And I know, it's another COVID video. People are so done hearing about COVID in general, but it is worth mentioning that in the US at least, COVID deaths are still at like 74,000 for 2023. And that's over three times the death toll of last flu season. And plus there's just really interesting immune system related things here that we can learn about. And of course we will address the criticisms of the study because anytime a study is saying something good about a plant-based diet, you know people are gonna try and tear it apart. So let's just go. <laughs> well, always consider the source uh, and I, reviewed some of Mike the Vegan videos and interestingly he's now kind of ready for the the backlash or the criticisms of these studies and the main point at the end here is going to be association does not mean causation. And I'll have you repeat that at the end. This is the January 2024 study in the BMJ's British Medical Journal's Nutrition Subjournal. It's from Brazil. And again, it looked at the chance of people getting COVID and what type of diet they had. And they looked at plant-based diets, which again, it used a loose term of plant-based. They included vegans and vegetarians together. They also looked at flexitarians, and then they also separately looked at them all together. You know, they analyzed different combinations. So sadly, there weren't enough people in the study to make vegans a completely separate group. So they lumped vegans and vegetarians together. And then in terms of flexitarians, we're talking about people that eat meat three or less times a week, which is a lot less than your average American at three times per day. <laughs> and if you've been keeping track of these topics and seen my previous video, you'll know that another British medical journal study also looked at COVID and loosely plant-based diets. <laughs> it's interesting that loosely plant-based, does that mean loosely packed? No. So, or carnivore-ish or keto-ish. If you watch some of my videos, the, the loose language basically means the study methods were kind of weak. And in both of these studies and the ones that uh, have been published about really about any association of a diet with COVID, either ask people what they were eating. So, you know, if someone asked you what kind of diet are you eating, you would give a response, whether you're doing it every day or every week, who, who knows. And, and then in the first study that he's talking about, the, in the supplemental material, they actually showed the number of fruit servings per week for the low carb dieters and, and the, the pasta, the rice. So this wasn't very low in carbohydrates, you know, but that's no problem. You just call it low carb ish. I mean, so this is, it's just not good enough research for me. Now you can do a lot of talking and, and about these association studies and, and, you know, if you need to have more content to, to talk about, you can talk about these, but they really don't persuade me. And none of them really looked at a keto diet. There was another one that was a keto diet. It was a publication from the Verda Health Group, which is a company that teaches a keto diet. And they did the best they could to follow people who were in the program and people had less severe cases of COVID and they have a different publication that's not reviewed in this one. So let's just keep going with how Mike the Vegan talks about the associations and the ish. Uh, and so he's complaining that no one, they didn't really have vegans and, and yet we're still talking about this. A, this one, finding a 73% lower risk of moderate to severe COVID in people on loosely plant-based diets. And we'll do some comparisons between these studies in a bit. They are different authors. If you saw that it was loosely low carb as well. I mean, definitely not keto. 
but, but this one out of Brazil was 700 people. And I will say they were significantly younger, averaged in their 30s versus like their 50s in the other one. And what are the results particularly? Well, after adjusting for a bunch of things, their final model showed that people on plant-based diets have a 39% lower risk of getting COVID at all. And just to touch on it now, the conflicts of interest are officially listed as none, and we'll explore that a little bit more at the end. So it's interesting. We often criticize the pharma industry for using relative risk reduction, not absolute risk reduction. So you might have a reduction of risk from 10% to 5%, which is a 5% absolute risk reduction. Let's say you're getting COVID, it's 10% versus 5%. You could also call that a 50% reduction because it went from 10 to 5, that's 50%. That's called the relative risk reduction. And drug companies are notorious for taking a very small absolute risk reduction and emphasizing or increasing the percent by talking about the relative risk reduction. And Mike, that's what you just did. You talked about the 30% reduction in risk, but that was relative risk reduction. So trying to make it look even better. I think the actual numbers were something like 15 to 10, something like that, the absolute risk reduction. And yes, we're talking about diet studies here that don't have very good control over what people are eating. You're taking self-report and, you know, it, it's really just not worth me going over this, except it's out there and people are talking about this over and over. And remember, if it's a, a study that's not an experimental study going forward, you can't prove causality. Association in a study like this does not mean causation. It can't. Now, if the risk, the absolute risk reduction is something like 100% to zero, absolute risk, like you, you, everyone dies and now everyone lives, we don't need a study for that. That's like giving penicillin for meningitis. Everyone died before, now we're having someone live. So there never was a randomized trial of penicillin for meningitis or pneumonia. There didn't have to be because everyone had died before. So here, when we're looking at small changes here, we, we have to look at absolute and relative risk. And the, the I guess one of the ways that people argue that this is valid information is that if it was total noise, generally the noise will dampen out the signal. And so if there isn't a biased direction of the misclassification, it's called misclassification bias, if, if you're not really accurate about what people are saying that they're doing, then it should be that you don't find anything. So misclassification bias biases toward the null of not finding anything. And so the argument for the epidemiologists give is that if there is misclassification, people aren't saying what's really happening and we're not really measuring things accurately, then we shouldn't be able to find any differences. Well, that's fraught with the problem that there's healthy user bias or confounders that you know people who tend to eat meat also tend to smoke more people who are, are vegan have other healthy behaviors so that it might not be the diet itself. Finally, when you get into a, the, the weeds here and focus on one dietary approach, it doesn't mean that other dietary approaches can't work. And so kind of my, my final thought about this is there's a study out there where a keto program done by a company, Verda Health, shows that there's less COVID and less severe COVID among people who had diabetes in their program compared to what would be expected. So maybe, just maybe, there's more than one diet that works. You know, maybe it's the absence of all the junk foods and all of the ultra-processed sugary foods that's the cause and a vegan diet or vegetarian diet and a keto diet work and and there isn't one better than another and and yet these studies won't be able to to parse that out or separate that out but to, to focus on just one type of dietary approach and then say therefore you ought to do it doesn't mean that other approaches can't work too so that, I mean, that's the problem when you come in with a, a bias 
toward one certain approach as you're going to have confirmation of what you already believe to be true. When I'm thinking about that one paper now where in a Stanford study, they took the two extremes, the very low carb and very low fat. So the Ornish like diet and an Atkins like diet, and they both had improvements in their metabolic profiles. Now it wasn't a randomized trial looking at these two groups, but they were in a trial that had accounted for other sorts of things. And it's another glimpse at maybe there are more ways to do this. Maybe a keto diet and a vegan diet or vegetarian diet have more in common than in difference. They all minimize the sugar and junk foods. Those who teach it in a, in a, an appropriate way and in the studies. And so can you maybe have less COVID in a plant-based diet compared to a typical American diet? Maybe. Can you have less COVID by eating a keto diet compared to a typical American diet? A different study not reviewed here says maybe not, not definitive in any way. Remember association does not mean causation. And what we really should do now, if we had all the money and time and the, and the, the governmental researchers in, in line, we would take diets and look prospectively and compare the immune function, the ability to withstand infections in a prospective manner to be able to figure out which one is better than another. And you know, I'm not sure that'll ever be done. So you'll have the, the vegan biased folks saying the vegan diet is best and the keto biased folks saying, well, you know, there's more than one way to do it. You biased people <laughs> that, and, you know, yes, I like to use a keto diet in my practice because it's simple, simple to implement. It's easy to teach. It's very effective. And so there are, I think a lot of ways to be healthy. There are probably a lot of ways to reduce COVID and the, the studies we reviewed in this video really don't prove it. I'm afraid association does not mean causation. So if you like this, you know, please like and ring the notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on further content. I share new videos now every Wednesday and Friday. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like subscribe and hit the notification bell and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.